Every year, some half million babies are born premature. With underdeveloped lungs and immature immune systems, many of these babies are vulnerable to RSV. Hello, I'm David Charles, Chairman of the Alliance for Patient Access. We're an organization of physicians who advocate for the physician-patient relationship. We work to ensure quality care and patient access based on our best clinical judgment. But unfortunately, we face increasing barriers, even for some of our most fragile patients. Compared to full-term babies, preemies are at high risk for RSV. This virus can cause life-threatening bronchiolitis and pneumonia. Preemies who suffer from RSV may also experience longer-term effects, such as wheezing and asthma. For African-American babies, the situation is compounded due to risk factors such as crowded living conditions and lower rates of breastfeeding. I didn't even know about RSV. My pediatrician never told us about it. After surviving the NICU, we were told our premature son, Dashiell, would be normal. But three months later, Dashiell got sick and was having trouble breathing. We brought him to the ER and he tested positive for RSV. We knew nothing about it, and we were told 80% of the kids in the ER had it. Dash was going to be okay. Three days later, during our follow-up visit, they gave Dashiell another breathing treatment and then came in and told us they had found him a bed. Go check into the hospital. We were shocked. We thought he was improving. We didn't know it at the time, but RSV had just changed our lives. I tell all my friends, RSV is the most dangerous virus you've never heard of. For the next four years, we dealt with ongoing upper respiratory infections, even with daily steroids and asthma breathing treatments. During those four years, I would periodically consider returning to work, but daycare was just not an option. One or two days in daycare and Dashiell would get sick for a week or so. It wasn't fair to him. At one point, I even made his doctor test his immune system. It was normal. It's just that his lungs were born weaker than a full-term baby, and he had taken such a big hit with the RSV. When our second child, Annabelle, arrived, she was also premature, and we were worried that she was gonna enter the same illness cycle as Dashiell. The emotional and financial toll on our family had been tremendous. Frankly, I was also afraid I couldn't handle another sick child. I proactively asked about RSV prevention options and was told about a monthly shot, but the doctor quickly informed me that Annabelle would not qualify by insurance standards, although she was actually born earlier than Dashiell we ended up paying for it ourselves, but thank God, Annabelle never caught RSV. Over 55% of preemies impacted by RSV nationwide are in the Medicaid system. At an inner city hospital such as ours, we see great disparity in access between babies who have private insurance versus the Medicaid babies. After looking at our data, we decided to take action and successfully helped win a legal case that provided therapy for one baby. However, far too many others slip through the cracks and end up readmitted. Unfortunately, the American Academy of Pediatrics has issued guidelines that restrict access to RSV prevention for the majority of premature infants, but they have not provided sufficient clinical evidence. And there's been no clinical trial to demonstrate that these restrictions will not place these babies in serious danger. These restrictions go against the FDA-approved label for the preventative medication. The Alliance for Patient Access finds this hard to believe. In a study we did to evaluate the effects of the restrictions of access to RSV preventative therapy, we found that 90% of those denied were under federal poverty level. Of those patients, over half did get an RSV infection. Two-thirds of those infected were hospitalized, and just as concerning, over two-thirds had ongoing wheezing and recurrent infections. When you compare the cost of preventing RSV with the potential long-term health care costs of these babies, it just makes sense. Given all that is spent on end-of-life care in America, shouldn't we show equal compassion to the very youngest and fragile patients, those with a lifetime of productivity ahead of them? If the FDA has determined, after extensive studies and review of the data, that this therapy is safe and effective in safeguarding premature infants, 
providers should have the option of prescribing it to their patients. And parents should know that if their provider thinks preventative therapy for RSV is necessary, their baby will be protected.